Slap walls, they're everywhere right now. Bedrooms, cafes, reception areas, and sure, they're easy enough to install until you need to cut out holes for sockets and light switches. Suddenly, it's a combination of electrical work and fine carpentry. What could possibly go wrong? Well, quite a bit, actually. I recently shared a top tip on how to avoid a potential electrocution risk, and let's just say it sparked a few strong opinions from the carpentry community. So, in this video, we're giving the whole issue a proper deep dive. We'll show you how to install sockets and switches safely, how to achieve a clean, professional finish, and highlight a few other installation crime scenes you'll want to avoid along the way. The first way people try to get around this is to leave the sockets on the original wall and just cut around them in the slat panel. In our opinion, that's a real crime scene. Not only do you end up with with a rough awkward cutout but you're left with white recessed sockets and switches sitting behind a textured wood finish. It doesn't look good, it doesn't feel right and it definitely doesn't say professional install. A much better option is to bring the sockets forward flush with the slat wall and finish it properly. You can achieve a high-end seamless look by pairing the install with decorative accessories like these from Nyglon. They come in a wide range of on-trend finishes including flat plate and screwless options. Perfect for modern interiors and premium fit outs. However, in doing this there's a hidden risk that many installers miss especially when you're retrofitting to an existing wall if you simply bring the socket forward and fix it to the existing back box using longer screws the gaps between the slats create open areas where fingers can reach through and come into contact with exposed electrical terminals that's a serious safety issue and a clear breach of BS 7671 to comply the top surface of any enclosure must meet IP4X and the other sides bottom and front IP2X in other words the design must prevent fingers or objects from accessing live terminals so if you're pushing accessories forward to match the face of the slats you need to deal with those open voids because without protection it's not just untidy it's unsafe the easiest way to bring the socket flush with the slat wall and make sure no one can touch live terminals is to use a plastic socket box spacer that's exactly what I did in my original installation thinking I was offering a solid safety tip to the industry and to be fair from a safety standpoint it works the accessory sits proud of the slats the terminals are protected and it helps meet the IP4X slash IP2X requirements but there's a downside to use this method the cutout in the slat wall has to match the outside dimensions of the socket face plate not just the metal box behind it that means the edge of your cut is visible around the accessory and unless you're particularly skilled in joinery that opens the floodgates to criticism let's just say the carpenters did not hold back it's tricky to get a perfect clean edge especially when you're working with veneered finishes in our case, the slat wall was a veneered oak panel and we found that the surface can chip or splinter quite easily once the multi-tool gets going. So if you're a joiner or just someone with a better cutting technique than us, please do share your top tips in the comments. We're all ears. Okay, so to get a neater finish, the next logical step is to cut the panel to match the size of the back box rather than the full face plate. That definitely helps improve the visual result. The socket now sits forward and the cutout isn't as obvious, but we've still got the same problem open gaps between the slats and potentially exposed terminals behind the accessory here's our solution take the off cuts from the hole you've just made and use them to create filler pieces these can be glued in place between the slats using a bit of contact adhesive it's simple effective and keeps everything looking uniform while helping close off that risk of accidental contact with live parts now there is another way one that some joiners swear by you can turn the socket into a feature by building a mitered timber frame around it it can look very tight almost like a picture frame for your accessories but honestly it seems like a lot of work just to highlight the fact that there's a socket there if that's your style go for it but for most of us the filler strip method does the job without the faff there are a couple more problems you might need to solve if you're using a decorative socket with visible screws like these Niglon premium edge and you're bringing the accessory forward you may find the original screws are too short to reach the back box and if you're tempted to just grab whatever longer screws you've got in the van beware you might end up with mismatched chrome screws on a sleek black or bronze face plate that's another crime scene right there the fix use screw extenders they thread into the existing back box and let you reuse the matching screws supplied with the accessory keeping the finish consistent and professional but short screws might be one thing short wires are another especially if the original install has a bit of a DIY aroma the conductors may not have enough length to reach the new front 
face. Fortunately, that's easy to fix. Just extend the conductors using PushFit Vago inline connectors. So that's the safe way and the smart way to install sockets and switches into slatted panelling without creating an electrical hazard or a joinery disaster. If you want to take your finish to the next level, we've included a link in the description to the nylon decorative sockets and switches we used in this video. And if you're interested in other joinery related electrical conundrums, check out the video on screen now where we explore how far should a switch or socket be from a hob.